look at looky what we've got here guys uh the two new characters that are just going to be released by fox next this was just sent to me recently so we're going to go ahead and we're going to break down ebony maw's full kit taskmaster's full kit and also the rework of the mercenaries so this is going to be very exciting guys let's just get right into this video let's begin with ebony maw so the latest and greatest legendary character in the Marvel Strike Force universe is Ebony Maw and his traits are villain, cosmic, mystic, support and black order. Of course, we already know that. Let's take a look at his basic ability here. Needle Storm, attack the primary target for 80% piercing plus bonus attack 3 times for 60% piercing. Woohoo, very nice. Apply bleed. If the primary target is a hero controller, apply bleed for two turns instead. All right, so automatically with his basic there, does a ton of good stuff here, applying bleed. And we already know that this guy is going to be a hero controller counter in the game. So right away with his basic here, this is phenomenal, guys. I'm loving what I'm seeing there right there. Let's jump into his special, Insidious Whisper. So this is a five turn cooldown, starts off at four, apply defense up for two turns to self and all of your allies. Apply counter to self and all Black Order and Thanos allies. Apply offense down for two turns to all of your enemies. What? And clear counter for all enemies. Unbelievable, guys. This is a sick, sick ability here. Applying defense up for yourself. Applying counter for yourself and obviously all your allies. And then applying defense down for two turns. That is fantastic. And uh, this is a great special here. So you'll be able to use that one on turn two. Let's go ahead into his ultimate here. Forced Transfusion. Seven turn cooldown starts off at five. So you'll be able to use this one on turn three. Steals 3% health from all enemies and redistributes to all of your allies. This bypasses heal block. Boom. There's the sustain for you right there. Uh, a lot of people were questioning how the sustain is going to be for the Black Order. Well, this right here makes it pretty goddamn good here. Repeat this attack four additional times. That's Shuri's ability. Apply slow to all enemies for two turns. Fill speed bar for self and all allies by 5% per Black Order and Thanos ally. So that is unbelievable there. This guy is off the hook, guys. Wow, <laughs> this is an unbelievable character right here. I am loving what I'm seeing from the Black Order and especially Ebony Maw so far, man. I cannot wait. Let's take a look at his passive here. Envoy of Thanos, unspawn, gain two regen, two death proof, and immunity for two turns, plus fill an ally Thanos' speed bar by 25% per Black Order ally, which is 100%. Because there are four Black Order allies on the field. So right away, just from spawning, well, this, he's going to give Thanos 100% turn meter so he can go ahead and start the battle off right away. Wowzers, Bowsers. On ally Thanos' turn, if he doesn't have the Reality Stone, the Time Stone, and the Soul Stone, grant him them. Plus two regen, plus two death proof, and two immunity for two turns. This character can only do this once per match. <laughs> on death of an enemy hero controller gain charged apply immunity to all allies and barrier all allies for 20% of this character's max health if charged on enemy turn apply ability block to all hero controller enemies and then close charged this cannot be dodged gain 30% resistance black order and Thanos also gain 30% resistance alright so first thing that I noticed guys is uh, there was a lot of speculations there that Ebony Maw is going to cancel Phoenix's revive ability. That's not really the case. I don't see that here. All it says is on death of enemy hero controller, gain charge, apply immunity to all of your allies, and then barrier all of them for 20% of this character's max health. So uh, it doesn't really say he cannot revive her, but either way, guys, this is off the chain. Unreal. There's so many things going on with Ebony Maw, guys. Wow. I cannot wait to unlock this guy and use him in my Black Order team. If you haven't been following my streams on Twitch every night at 9 o'clock, you've been missing out because the Black Order is getting maxed out every which way I can. And this is just going to put him over the edge, guys. Uh, the sustain is there now. The, just so many things happening, man. Jesus Christ. I cannot wait for this guy to come out here. Woo! 
all right let's take over the excitement over to task master here and the rework of uh, the mercenaries and let's see what they're all about so we already know what task master could do because he was in a recent blog post uh, let's jump into who's getting a rework here guys so first off it's bullseye yay your bullseye is getting a small little rework which i'm surprised they didn't really do much for him but then again he's uh a attacking abilities weren't really the problem because he already had some decent damage everything else was the problem so let's take a look at what they did here so they are changing his passive now it's going to gain 10 percent accuracy all allies are going to gain 10 percent accuracy this he already had um uh, mercenary allies gain 10 percent crit this he already had here's the difference on war defense assist allies on non-attack abilities so once you put him on war defense, every time somebody like a Merc Lieutenant or a Mercenary Riot Guard uses a non-attack ability, bang, 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 he's going to get an assist from your friendly neighborhood Bullseye here. So a small little rework, but obviously it's an improvement, so we'll take it. All right, the next character getting a rework is Mercenary Lieutenant. This guy is already pretty useful in the game, but let's see what they can do to make him even better. His basic is going to attack primary targets for 290% damage, grant one ability energy to a random ally, grant one ability energy to all mercenary villain allies. Woo! So on his basic, he's going to grant an, uh, an energy to all of your allies every time he uses a basic. That is off the chain, guys. That is a really great basic ability there and he already has a really good ultimate ability which he can uh give everybody speed and offense up so uh already that's a nice improvement there let's take a look at his passive as well because this got a rework so on turn 40 percent chance to heal lowest health ally by 25 percent of this character's max health if ally is mercenary heal gain for 10 percent of this character's max health when a mercenary ally drops below 50% max health, fill this character's speed bar by 40% on war defense. When an enemy attacks an adjacent ally, heal lowest health mercenary ally for 1,500 health plus 10% of this character's max health. So the more red stars you got on them, the more you're going to be able to uh, heal somebody. So they just improved his healing. He's become much more of a, a support healer character in the game now. And on war defense, he's just that much better, guys. So... I'm loving the tweaking they're going on over here. So let's jump over to the next character that's reworked. Okay, so next up we have Mercenary Riot Guard. The only thing they're changing for him is his passive. Now he's gaining 25% block chance. He already had that. Gain 25% block amount. That's new. On War Defense, on turn, apply one deflect up to a maximum of four to adjacent allies. Gain 10% block chance per mercenary ally that is pretty huge on war defense guys because you already know mercenary riot guard is always on defense up he's basically defense up the whole game and he's taunting basically the whole time anyways because it's a two turn cooldown it's unreal so unless they can get through mercenary riot guard your opponents are gonna have a very 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 hard time to get to the rest of the mercenaries and as they as you already saw with uh bullseye he's going to assist on all of these non Attack abilities from Mercenary Ray Guard, Mercenary Lieutenant. This is going to be pretty potent in defense, guys. I kind of very like these new adjustments here. It's going to make them very, very useful on war defense here. So, strangely enough, the only other character that's actually getting a rework on the Mercenaries is Killmonger out of everyone else. It's kind of surprising here. But the only thing that they're changing from Killmonger is his passive. So, um, the current passive is in Raids. It, he gains 20% chance to counterattack, and then in raids he also gains 20% chance to counterattack per each Wakanda ally. All they did with this one now is, guys, they removed the raids part. So now he's going to gain a 20% chance to counter per Wakanda ally. So he's basically going to have 80% chance to counterattack, unless they already count themselves as an ally, which I doubt. But that's about 80% chance to counter. Every time in all game modes, not just raid. So that's a nice little buff to him. But I'm not really sure if he's going to be part of the complete mercenary defensive squad here. We'll have to take a look at that. I really do love the fact that he attacks the most injured enemy every time there's a defensive up applied. Because mercenary right guard always applies defense up, guys. So I think eventually if they ever come up with a new Wakandan character, Killmonger's got a great home with the mercenaries. 
But other than that, guys, you'll have to tune into the stream tonight to see what I'm going to do with the mercenaries and what positioning we're going to make for them on war defense. So uh, that's pretty exciting. I'm going to end this video off here, guys. Hope you enjoy that. I'm going to catch you guys on the next video. Till then, have a good morning, good afternoon, and good night, everybody. Thank <music> you.